Oh, they do like to eat kudus, everybody, and we are so very lucky to have found them. This is the Nkuhuma pride. Look at those huge teeth. This is a beautiful pride of lions. And it's the pride of lions that we see most often here. And they're so tired. Lions are always tired, you know. They sleep for 20 hours of the day. Oh, it's very special to find them. Now, I'd love to say that I found them. But, you know, Tristan found them this morning. And then Fergus, who's on camera today, very sharp eyes, he spotted them this afternoon. Elijah, you want to know if the baby lions would attack? Well, if you irritated them enough, they might. But not now. Most animals here, even big lions, will try and run away from you before they will attack. Everything out here just about is afraid of us as human beings. Why, you might ask, we're not very scary. Well, to animals, we are very scary. And that's mainly because, you know, for a long, long time, since human beings have been around, we've been hunting animals. And so they don't know that we're slower than them and weaker than them. They just think that we are predators. And so they're scared of us. But in the car which we are now, obviously, we're sitting in our vehicle, they're not so scared of us because we don't stand up in the car. And because we don't stand up in the car, they're just not quite so scared of us as they would be if we were on foot. So those baby lions, Elijah, are not going to get up and attack us. You don't need to worry about that, which is lucky. Neela, you're looking at the answer to your question there. You say, do female lions have manes? No, they don't. Look, there's a female lion, and she doesn't have a mane, does she? Only the males have got manes, and for those of you who don't uh, or struggle to remember things like that, remember, of course, normally only men have got beards. And so it's the same with lions. A lion has a beard in much, the, at least a mane, in much the same way that a human being has got a beard. Look at the little ones playing. Now, if I'm not mistaken, the oldest ones in that little group should be just over a year old, and the younger ones just under a year old. The youngest, there's one very young one, well, very-ish young one. It will be a year old in July. And the very older cubs, those are young cubs there, are... I think they were born in May. They must be a year old now. Isn't that nice? Them all with their legs up. And you know, so often when we see lions at this time of the day, it's really quite boring because they're normally asleep. But these guys are playing and they're just waking up slightly. Oh, and you want to know how sharp their teeth are? Well, they're not as sharp as, say, a house cat's teeth. But they're much heavier and they're much stronger and their jaws are much more powerful and that means that they actually could do much more damage than a house cuts cat's teeth and so while they're not quite as sharp needle sharp as a house cat's teeth they are very very powerful and well how sharp would i say i'm trying to think of something like a like a pencil basically you know how when you've got a pencil and you've been writing say half a page and then it's a little bit blunt and you think about sharpening it, well, that's probably about how sharp a lion's teeth are. But as they get older, the teeth get blunter and blunter. Jeremy, you say, why is it sleepy? Well, the best way for me to describe that to you, Jeremy, is to say, well, you know how after you've had a lot to eat, a huge meal, you've had an enormous meal, you sometimes get a little bit sleepy and you want to go and have a bit of a lie down. It's a little bit like that for the lions. Except that they don't eat what we eat. So they don't eat what we call a good, balanced, varied diet. They only eat meat. And because they only eat meat, what it means is that they don't have a lot of energy in the diet. It's difficult for them to make enough energy from their food to be active all the time. And so, while I know this is quite difficult for you guys to understand, because I know you're still little, but you will understand it one day, because 
they don't they only eat meat and they don't eat things like uh, fatty foods or even things like sweets and chocolates which might give you a little bit of energy briefly although they're not very good for you um, it means that they're tired quite a lot of the time and if you look at any carnivore around the world a pure carnivore in other words a pure meat eater you're going to find that they are tired quite a lot as well and i'm sure those of you who have got dogs and cats at home will know how much they sleep. Well, that's because it's quite difficult for them to make enough energy to be active. And when I say make energy, your body is always working to make energy to help you do the things that you have to do. Now, Manana, you're wondering how big these lions are, and that's a very good question, of course, because you can't really tell from your screen there how big they are. That big female there who's now fast asleep. <laughs> Look at that. The big female is about, who was fast asleep there, is probably weighs in the region of 120 kilograms, which in pounds is about, ooh, let's say multiply by 2.2, we've got about 260 pounds plus minus. That's what she weighs, so she's huge. I'm just going to quickly talk on the game drive radio to help someone else come and see the lions. Go ahead. I'm just quickly listening and then I'll talk to you again. Okay, copy that. Now, I think we'll probably spend a little bit longer with him. Oh, I'll tell you what I do want to show you. Um, for, can we go to the one on the left, the lioness on the left? It looks like she's got a blind eye. Ooh, look at that. See that, everybody? It looks like her eye there is not so good. It's got a film over it. Of course, now she's closing it. And Liam, you're wondering how old these lions can get before, well, before they die, I guess. Liam, lions don't get very old, you know. They probably would be lucky to get to 10 years. 12 years is a pretty good age. Anything above 12 is really very good indeed um, for a male. For the females, maybe two years more than that. So maybe the females normally live to about 12, and then sometimes to 14 and sometimes a little bit older than that. But the oldest lion in this area was 18 when he died, apparently. And that's very, very old for a lion. And I'm not sure about the oldest female. So they can live for some time, but yeah, not very long. And they will live longer in a zoo situation. And although I know it can seem often quite cruel to have animals in zoos, the reason they live longer is because, of course, there's nothing to attack them, whereas out here there is always something. There's always a slightly stronger, younger male lion coming to cause trouble and try and take your territory, or if you're a female, well, you've still got to hunt all the time, and eventually you just get too old to hunt properly. fast asleep now. Now, Kedrick, you're wondering how long a lion sleeps for each day. Kedrick, they can sleep for up to 20 hours of the day. Now, I don't know if you know how many hours there are in a day, but there are 24 hours in a day. So they sleep for up to 20 of those 24 hours. Isn't that amazing? That is a very long time to be fast asleep, don't you think? You, as a young human being, probably sleep between 9 and 10 hours of the day, and when you get a bit older, you'll sleep for much less than that, uh, probably sort of 8 hours if you're lucky, um, although you live in America, which means you'll probably have to work very hard to survive, so you'll probably, <laughs> you'll probably only have about 4 hours. Oh, look, here comes a cub. Ethan, that's a very good question. I don't know that I know the answer to your question. You say, why are their eyes yellow? Well, they're not always. They're sort of sometimes greeny and sometimes orangish. But that colour is obviously effective for them in terms of reflecting enough light out of the eye. So protecting the... Oh, she's trying to suckle. It's much too old to be suckling. Much, much too old. There will be no milk in that female. trying to get some milk out because he's feeling a little bit hungry. Um, 
So those eyes are helpful to, you know, it, the color of eyes it depends very much on the amount of light that there is and whether the light will damage the eye or whether there's not enough light and you'll find that the color is just obviously that yellow and, and orange color is best for reflecting and absorbing as much light as possible, I think. That's very interesting what we're watching there because you should be completely weaned. Caitlin, you say they're the top of the food chain. Yes, they're definitely the top of the food chain, Caitlin. Nothing else threatens a lion except a very big pri uh, not pride, uh, clan of hyenas. Spotted hyenas have big conflict and big fights with lions, and so sometimes they will be the top of the food, food chain, depending on how many there are. But largely, yes. It is the lions that are the top of the food chain and nothing will give them any trouble at all. They're much bigger than all the other predators. <laughs> Dominique, I think your question is, do lions have venom? Is that right? Dominique, lions don't have venom, no. They don't kill with venom. There are no mammals that kill with venom. That's a very interesting question because it's the second time we've had it from the schools over the last few days, and it's quite interesting. They don't have venom. Only reptiles, as far as I know, have venom. Some fish have venom. I don't think there are any birds that have any venom. Um, obviously, lots of insects have a little bit of venom in them. And what about frogs? Frogs have got venom. So frogs and reptiles and fish can make venom, but birds and mammals... I don't think they can. Certainly lions cannot make any venom. They don't kill with venom, they kill purely... Let's look at that big jaw open there. They kill purely with their teeth and their strength. They're very, very powerful animals. So they don't need any venom either to protect themselves or to kill their prey. Now, Ruth, I probably should have told you this before, but you say, how many cubs are there? Ruth, in this pride, there are six cubs. And I don't think we can see them all, but there are six of them. And I must say, it's very lovely to have them with us again. We haven't seen them for some time. And in that great carpet of lions and all around here, there'll be six cubs, and there are five lionesses in the group. And Jameson, you're wondering why they're so close to each other. Jameson, it's because they are they like each other, they're friends with each other. And they will always be close to each other, these lions. They like to be close to each other. It's one of the major features of lions is that they form these prides, what we call prides, that's what a group of lions is called. And because they form prides, they're always close to each other. But the males are not always, you know, the males will move away eventually. They will be chased away by their fathers. And they will have to go and live on their own for a little while. And then they might join up with some other males and start a pride, or not start a pride, but take, a, take over a pride of their own. And then they do still spend a lot more time on their own than any other of the females. Parson, you're wondering if the girls hunt. Uh, yes, they do. They hunt hugely. They are very successful and very effective hunters. And this pride likes to hunt buffalo. That's their favorite thing. They really like to hunt buffalo. And sometimes they hunt smaller stuff. I'm sure they catch quite a few impala, which we saw earlier, maybe the old nyala. But buffalo is really the thing that they like to eat the most. Now, there are no males here because the males are somewhere else at the moment. Now, Elijah, you want to know if these lions would catch an elephant, if they would hunt an elephant. Elijah, yes, sometimes, not in this area. It very seldom happens here. There's too much else that is much easier to kill than elephants here. And so normally it's buffalo or impala or nyala, kudu, those things you saw with Tristan. They will definitely be eaten um, by lions like this but 
elephants very seldom and you normally need an enormous enormous group of lions or pride of lions to take out an elephant because an elephant of course can weigh in excess of 10,000 pounds so they are enormous creatures here comes the other cub Kenyon, you're wondering how fast a lion can run. Pretty fast, Kenyon. Probably at about 50 miles an hour, if they have to. Which is pretty quick. But that's a female. I don't think the males are quite as fast, but the males are very, very strong. Now, of course, it's very difficult to work out really how fast a lion can run. So the guess is about 50 miles an hour. But unlike with a car that you do a speed test with, you know, you can put it on a road and uh, drive it, you can't really tell a lion to run in a straight line and then measure how fast it's running. So it's quite difficult to figure out really how fast they are. Hello, Liana. You're wondering if they always sleep together. Well, this pride does. Yes, absolutely. Not all the males, though. The males of this area, which are called the Birmingham boys, there are four of them, they don't always sleep together. They have to patrol a very large territory. And because they're patrolling all the time, they don't really have time to stay with each other all the time. But this pride will normally sleep together unless the females are off hunting. And sometimes they might go off hunting and they might be unsuccessful and then they will leave the cubs behind and they'll sleep on their own and these cubs will sleep on their own as well. But the cubs will always be together and the adults will almost always be together. All right, kids, we're going to say goodbye to you. I hope you have a very wonderful day at school. It is Friday, so you'll have the weekend to look forward to and, of course, you must be very nearly getting to your summer holidays. So I hope you have a lovely day at school. We're going to enjoy the rest of our safari with these lions and see what else Tristan... Yes, here we are, still with the Inkuhuma pride, everybody. The school drive is a thing of the past, and so therefore it was beholden on me to tell you that on Sunday evening we are going to be having a fireside chat, and that fireside chat is going to be tinged with a certain amount of melancholy and sadness as we pay tribute to our lost queen, Kurula. We are not going to uh, pass any judgment as to what has happened to her, but clearly she doesn't show any signs of returning to us uh, from whatever uh, fate has befallen her. And so we're going to talk about her and share our memories and share our impressions of certainly what seems to be one of the most successful leopards in the great history of the Sabi Sand. So you can join us for the last 15 minutes of the Sunset Safari on Sunday. And even that lion looks a bit sad by what I'm saying there. And then if you would like to, you can immortalise Karula in your wardrobe by buying a t-shirt and the link for that t-shirt is on the blog that went out today so just go to wildearth.tv click on the blog and uh, not wildearth.tv sorry go to wildsafarilive.com i think and click on the blog i think i've got these websites correct and there you will find a link to buy the t-shirt if you would like it to immortalize karula in your wardrobe and it's really quite a nice drawing of a picture uh, that Jörg Danhauser took of the Queen some years back. I'm just going to wait for Final Control to give me some confirmation as to exactly which website the blog is on. I'm pretty sure it's wildsafarilive.com and then you just click on the blog. Ah, apparently, no, you won't get that. You can just go to blog.wildearth.tv, blog.wildearth.tv, or you'll find it on our Facebook page, the Safari Live Facebook page. So please join us then. I'm sure many of you have many, many memories of Karula.
Elena, you want to know the difference between a male and a female lion and how we tell? Well, when they're adults, it's very simple because the males have got manes. They've got those great big iconic shaggy manes that cover uh, their heads. Oh, you're just seven years old. No wonder you're a little bit confused about it. So if you've got a big male, well, then he has got a big shaggy coat of hair around his head and his neck and it goes down onto his chest it's a little bit like a beard so it's a bit like uh, you know that men have beards and women don't have beards well some most women don't have beards uh, it's the same with lions the males have got a big shaggy mane and the females don't Sometimes the females have got manes and sometimes the males don't, but that's very, very unusual. The males are also much, much bigger. It's so nice that they're doing something, you know. Most of the time, lions, of course, do very little at all. And I'm much appreciative of the fact that this little cub is playing with a stick. I think that's very kind of it. And I hope that it continues playing with the stick all afternoon. Now NASCAR for Life, which I, I, I really do enjoy your Twitter handle. I'm not sure why, but I do. Uh, you say, will these cubs stay here when they finish nursing? Do you mean in the pride, or do you mean just sort of around here for now? Because they will stay in the pride. Uh, they should have stopped nursing some six months back. And I'm not sure why they still think it's acceptable for them to be trying to nurse. But NASCAR for life, they will stay in the pride, the females, for the rest of their lives. And the males will be tossed out when they're about two and a half to three, or between two and a half and three and a half years. But I think, if I'm not mistaken, of the eight cubs that we had, only three were males. And I think both of the ones that succumbed to, wire, to white muscle disease were males, I think. And I think there's only one male cub amongst the f five that we, that amongst the six that we have here. Isn't that very sweet watching them just playing there? That's wonderful. Just great stuff. Looking at us, chewing their stick, playing with each other, and just like kids, they don't want to have an afternoon nap, they want to play. <laughs> it's very sweet. They still, it's so nice to see them still playful as opposed to having assumed the playlessness of the adults. And of course, the reason they lose their playfulness is, well, when they lose their playfulness is when they hit puberty. Alrighty, let's head across to Jamie Patterson, who seems to have found an enormous pile of evil smelling substance. Yes, let's talk about lions, everybody. We've just come around to the other side of the pride. We've now got pretty much all of them in view, I think. One, two, three, four. Lionesses, one, two, three, four, five, six cubs. Yes, we've got them all. Very, very nice. Marvellous, in fact, to have ten lions when we haven't seen lions for so very long. And while it must be said that ordinarily at this time of the day we wouldn't be sitting with lions for this length of time mainly because they'd be fast asleep these ones aren't for some reason the cubs are playing which is great but also um, we haven't seen them for so very long that a full day of lions is just what the doctor ordered as the cliche goes especially when they are playing with sticks Debbie, you're wondering if I can tell which one the male is. No, not from here. He will look completely indistinct from the five sisters he has. But if you see the back end of the tail, 
In other words, if you look behind the tail, then you can see absolutely. That's not hard at all. Uh, you can definitely see his um, lion bits, if you like. That's really such a terrible way to put it. I've got a feeling that's him. I don't know why I have that feeling. I've just got a feeling that that's the male. Um, Sky, you say, will the older cubs harass the younger cubs? Yes, you know, they did to start with, but you can see that their sizes are not very different anymore. I mean, you can see, I think we're looking at the youngest one there, and I, I'm guessing that that's the male. It might not be. Um... But what you can see is that their size is not very different. And so, yes, although they might sort of make some sort of attempt at uh, bullying from time to time, and they will definitely, definitely um, sort of uh, dominate at a kill, they're not big enough to really do any damage anymore. They're not uh, able to bully like they would have if, say, that was a brand new cub. So the new cubs, if we are correct and Amber Eyes is giving birth as we suspect, when the new cubs come into the pride, then absolutely there will be an element of bullying. Uh, but by then, of course, these chaps will not be trying to suckle anymore, and so Amber Eyes will be able to suckle her cubs uh, pretty much uh, exclusively, although these guys are trying to suckle, which is a bit odd. But there will only be... They will only <laughs> they will only be introduced to the pride when they're about six weeks old, the new cubs. Isn't that wonderful? And I will just tell you that the bushwalk is following up on kudu alarm calls, so we might be very lucky soon to have something interesting there. That is fantastic. A little bit of stick eating. We'll be very interested to know if that... Oh, well, there are two eating sticks now. And the reason, of course, that they aren't a different size from the males was just like it is with human beings. Until they hit puberty, well, it's almost impossible to to tell the difference between males and females but for our cultural or the cultural way we dress each other up now i am taking great pleasure from this because i'm about to link to brent and for the very first time he doesn't actually that must be very irritating for poor old brent because i've no doubt that he would have had a very snappy rejoinder uh, to my uh, well, not enjoyment, but astonishment that we had cats and he, for the first time, didn't have a cheetah chasing a gazelle or lions hunting a buffalo or uh, hyenas hunting a buffalo or all of the above happening all around him at the same time. It really has been quite astonishingly action-packed from that part of the world. And, well, we'll bring you much more of that and, of course, the continuation of the saga of the Inkohuma Pride from Juma. None of that will change. And in case you are a new viewer, we are expanding the operation up into the Mara. Brent has gone there as an advanced, uh, sort of advanced party. He and a couple of the tech guys and a couple of the cameramen are living in, well, what can only be described as fairly difficult conditions up there. And so they're doing a fantastic job setting things up and finding out all about the animals there. And that's why there just are one or two technical glitches. What they are living rough, as it were, and doing a fantastic job keeping things going for us there and no one is ever is going to leave Juma well we I mean cover us going up to, to the Mara but the we will continue with your enjoyment and following of the lions here and the leopards here and all the goings on at Juma while we learn the new characters of Safari Live in the Mara Really, is a great deal of stick eating going on here, and I wonder if it isn't a, something of a symptom of the hunger they're feeling, perhaps at the moment. They've certainly have been also grooming each other a lot. Well, there you can see quite a size difference between that cub and the one behind it. 
and just the last of the spots that they've got on their heads, they are starting to assume that sort of slightly ugly teenager phase, if you know what I mean. They get a bit lanky. definitely a female, the one facing us, I mean the one with her backside facing us, the other one I think also a female. We'll try and identify the male at some stage. Yep, that's definitely a female, so two females there. You say you saw the lioness with a bad eye and you want to know what's going on. I don't know what's going on. Taylor noticed it first a little while back. And apparently she is going blind. Or she has gone blind. And there may have been some damage. And it's healed. But she does seem to, at least she's seeing in a very milky fashion, she seems to be completely blind in that eye. Unfortunately for her. But I don't know what happened you know, we've spent so little time with these lions of late that it's very difficult to tell you what's happened with any of them. I mean, that is just wonderful, isn't it? It's sort of lazy playing, not to get up too much. And want to exhaust themselves too much. pleasant afternoon around here. AJ, you want to know the floppy-eared female is still alive? Yes, she most certainly is, because all six of the cubs that did not succumb to white muscle disease are alive. Um, so I'm sure she is, but I think you might find that her ear has healed. I don't see one with a floppy ear, and I haven't seen one with a floppy ear. So that's quite fun. I'm just going to quickly guide someone in on the Game Draft channel. Go. A negative, you need to come onto the fire break between Mvubu Road and Gari Cutline. You will see the tracks going south from the crest there. I'm just helping someone get in here. Hmm, that's interesting. Michael, she might. I don't know. You say, if Amber Eyes is having cubs, will she wait longer to introduce the cubs to the pride than might be expected because of the age difference? I think it's possible. You know, that six-week period that we talk about is not set in stone. It's not, she doesn't sort of set her calendar day one and at uh, six weeks and say, right, come on, chaps, let's go and meet the rest. Uh, it's a gradual introduction. It normally begins any time from four weeks, I think. I've certainly seen cubs introduced to the pride from about four weeks. And then they will go back to a den and be on their own for a while again. And so it's a sort of gradual process, but round about six weeks. So would she take the decision to keep them away from the pride for a little bit longer? Mm, she might. I don't think so, though. Because in theory... Uh, these cubs should have stopped suckling, and I'm not sure that she would tolerate them attempting to suckle from her. So I'm not sure how much competition there would be for milk. But, I mean, like I said, it's a bit odd to see them trying to suckle. And so it's possible. Now I wonder, remember we saw Tumba the other day? I don't know if you do remember, but he opened his mouth and you could very clearly see his big teeth coming through. Now, by my reckoning, he's eight months old. And these cubs are proportionately a bit older for a bigger animal, so I imagine that those are probably their big teeth that you can see, and that their milk teeth have gone. And tormented zombie owl, you were wondering if they do lose their teeth like baby humans. Yes, they certainly do. Apparently all mammals, as far as I know 
get milk teeth that will fall out and be replaced by the adult versions. <laughs> it is just so amazing to see how affectionate they are with each other when there isn't food in the offing. They're the best of friends. Toss a large stake down between them though and the friendliness will evaporate immediately. It's just looking around a little bit because there's a... There's the male. That's him there. That's the male. He's just got up. There you can see a quite obvious difference. Oh, am I talking rubbish? Hang on a second. I'm pretty sure that's the male. And this he's just got a slightly shaggy bottom. No, that's a female, sorry. I apologise. Talking rubbish. As you can see, the light has now changed. The sun just pushing down below the clouds. Well, and turning everything rather precious. In the background, a rain locust going. And it was a black-headed oriole that's calling that made them look up. Alarm calling, but probably at them. That's a really appalling black oriole call. Just stunning. And like I say, most days, once we'd spent this length of time with a pride of lions that wasn't doing a great deal, would probably drive away. But because we haven't seen them for so long, we're going to spend a little bit more time with them. If they don't do much in the next little while, we'll probably move out and make some space for somebody else, and we may be come and try and see if we can see them a bit later. But we have had a very, very good day with the Inkohuma Pride. And, as I said this morning, but maybe you weren't with us, the tracks of this pride headed towards where they terminated when Tristan found them, and the tracks of what we think is amber eyes turned round, or it must be amber eyes, turned round and walked back down the same road and then headed the system just to the north of the Galago Pan. So she may well be giving birth there. <laughs> now we're going to go from this lion across to what is in front of the lion's face. Watch the focus, Paul. There we are, with Jamie. <laughs> 